My name is Valerie, I'm from the Netherlands and I studied animation, specialized in 2D animation and as well concept art. So why I decided to do 2D animation is actually because of my childhood and I grew up watching a lot of animations, uh, like animated series and movies. And most of them at that time were animated in 2D frame for frame. I decided to go for 2D because that's what inspired me to go into animation in the first place. What I like about 2D animation is that you can see a little bit of the artists themselves. I like that you can see that it's not always perfect. It's kind of an artist autograph in the animation and that's what I like about it. So the idea for my student film is that I've always been interested in animated films. That's what inspired me in the first place, like the uh, animated series. Well, obviously you cannot graduate with an animated series. <laughs> because That's way too much work. I pitched to my, my teachers, I'm interested in th this area in, in the animation world. And I would like to make a, sort of like a pilot episode. It's not really a pilot episode because <laughs> it's a short film. But in my uh, student film, I had an intro, like a little theme song, and then the adventure with the characters. And when I developed the short film, I actually wrote multiple scripts. And from those scripts, we pick one, or me and my teachers, they, they pick one to work out, and uh, which, which seemed doable at the time as a student. And that's how we approached it. So there were already multiple stories before I uh, worked on my film that came after my graduation film. Pepelu Universe, it's actually about life itself, about childhood things that I've seen as a kid or experienced one way or another. Either I heard from it or I witnessed it myself. I kind of felt that those things are always like pushed under the rug, if, if you know what I mean, um, by the adults, right? As a kid, you, you come face to face with something and you don't quite understand it and you try to ask the adults or try to make sense of it um, in your own way, in the mind of a child. And the adults don't always, you know, you know there's something wrong or uh, something isn't right. You know it as a kid, uh, but you cannot really fully understand it yet until you're older and you, you kind of look at it from a different perspective, from a different um, a moment in your life. And with Pepe Lou, I thought that animation would be a great way to touch upon these kind of subjects, just daily life and things you see and things that happen. And maybe the animation can make it more approachable for uh, people who watch it. And maybe they can identify with the characters and understand, okay, I'm not the only one that's having problems or the only one that's feeling a bit uncomfortable about this, uh, about this situation. And I thought that animation makes it approachable because it looks very appealing. It's colorful. Uh, the characters are not real. And I think that's a, a great thing about animation is that you can create anything. You, you can create an entire universe and it's less confronting. It's not, you know, you don't have to see a real child be sad. Uh, it is a tough subject, like some of the subjects are tough. And for my graduation film, I picked a really difficult one, uh, which is about domestic violence. And I decided to go for that story in my graduation film because I knew this would be possible now as a student. And with my second film, it's less heavy, but still, you know, um, problems within the house and kids try to cope with it in their own way. But it's more uh, happy and there, there's a lot more humor in that one. Uh, this is the first concept. So the story behind this one it was actually pitching a different concept to my teachers, which they thought was too difficult at that time because it was a very elaborate story. It's very rough, uh, but it shows the first design of Pepe. So it just started out with a, a simple shape and you have the character and there you have Luco as well, the little bird friend. This is the start. Where do you want to go next? This looks interesting. I want to do something with this instead. So I have the design of Pepe and I gave her some color. I used very bright red, like a primary color because it's a child and they, they often work with very bright colors. And I searched for a style or I looked for a style that matched the idea. So I went for the hand-drawn kind of child uh, drawing look for her in my first film. You can see it with very bright colors and very simple designs. The style frames of where do I want to go, what's the design like, and just some rough ideas. This is the idea for the forest that you can see in my graduation film. There's a, a big scene in that. I decided to go with a different types of colors. So this one is very dark and grayish, and the colors of the characters are very bright, so they really stand out. And over here we have a colored background, which is a little bit different, different in tone, to set the mood for the characters. So here are some uh, concept art for the Wolves of Mango Town. The big change, as you can see here, the, there's still like a painty kind of look in the backgrounds. 
but the characters themselves are solid. They have line art and they have one set of colors for them. And here you can also see the idea of the, the same type of background, but the characters are drawn differently. And this is a, a concept art for the style. So whether I wanted to have everything with line art or whether it should still have this painty look. So the designs of the characters, usually with the animations, I pick easy designs or easily drawn. So the, the shapes are like very round or basic shapes that are easily reproduced. And always keep in mind, it has to be for animation uh, because if the characters are too complicated, for example, uh, this character at the right, I did animate him, by the way, <laughs> and it was a lot of work. But um, if it's a very detailed character, it takes a long time to draw, like relatively compared to a easy design. I think the design of a character has to have some added value if it's very detailed. Um, and if it doesn't have to be, it's more efficient not to do uh, a very detailed design, even though it might look very pretty or it might be uh, very interesting to look at. I think shapes themselves can also be very interesting, like the basic shapes, especially for animation. And if you can make those shapes very expressive uh, through the animation, I think you can achieve a lot by that, by uh, making the characters come to life and make them believable as characters. You have to keep in mind, if you work on a film, uh, how much time do you have? How much, uh, also later on, how much is your budget? Do you have the time and budget to produce a very detailed and elaborate film? If the answer is no, I think you have to look at uh, what's what's what can you do with what you have and what's doable and whether it fits within your concept. Well, I, I think just the basic of it is whether it adds something to the film or not. So for this style of animation, I picked a no line art style, which is nice in a way, but it also has its own uh, difficulties because everything has to be drawn on a different layer. So here we have the construction of the characters. Luko's face, this the little bird, is drawn on a different layer. Uh, his beak and his wing as well. And then you have the body, which is a separate layer. The, the legs are drawn on the same layer as well. And the more complex the character is, the more layers they have. And this was the thing with this style of animation. After I finished this film, uh, the reason why I went for line art in my other film is because I thought line art would be easier. <laughs> But I found out that it has both has its own complications and it's both uh, their own advantages. So sometimes I do have a rough animation. Sometimes I choose not to do a rough animation because there's a time restriction. And sometimes it's just more efficient for me to just go straight into animation. At the same time, sometimes it does help to have a sketch version. And then I do sketch it out first. But it really depends on the movement, uh, whether I can just go for it straight away or whether I have to uh, do a, a rough version first. So for this one, I did not do a rough version. I like to animate by doing, and it's something uh, how I learned to animate is just go for it and try it out. And when it, when it doesn't work, of course, you have to correct it. Well, I do have to say I started animating when I was inexperienced. I, I was still in, 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 uh, in high school and even as a kid when I was younger. So I just went for it. And as I grew older, I did, you know, I studied animation. They, they teach you how to do it and how things actually work instead of just figuring things out. But I still like the exploration of trying it out. Basically, what I like, uh, what, what I do when I animate, I imagine the, the movement I want. And if I know what kind of movement I have to animate, I can usually reproduce it. And if it's difficult movement, if something it's not like, for example, um, if it's like a motorbike, I will look at a reference. I will look up what they look like. I will look up what they move like, or just look around you outside and, and, and keep an eye out for motorbikes. Uh, but usually I like to discover it in, in some way by, by just going for it. <laughs> but at the same time, it's also a time, a time thing. So if there's not a lot of time, then sometimes it's quicker to do it this way. And sometimes, of course, it's not quicker to do it that way. It's sometimes better just to do the rough. You, you don't have to think about the movement anymore when you clean. If you do have a rough version, and when you don't have a rough version, of course, you, you're, you're going along, uh, you're trying to make it up as you go. But the, in the end, uh, you will have to find the final result if it does work out. <laughs> so it's a little bit um, a little bit complicated. And at the same time, I would not, if people ask me, like, can you teach me how to animate? I, I, I often think that it's better to go the traditional route instead of doing it my way. So in the other film, I have wolves and i was wondering 
about what they should look like. And they're, they're, this, they're not really wolves, wolves. They're in the minds of the, the children. Like the, the, the children imagine the wolves in, in some, some sense. So these are different styles of animations I did for... They're, they're done very roughly and very quickly to see whether it would work for the film. But in the end, I did go with one line art wolf and one brush wolf because they're not the same children. And they could be shown differently. So these are some tests for the short film. This is also a style test. I think it, the, the, my graduation film was either four months or four and a half. I do know that it was quite a rush for the deadline. The animation process, so the, the, the concept development took longer. I think 2016 went in production and it took about seven months. My deadline was by the end of 2016. I had to deliver the film. We had to do uh, voice recording and uh, the audio, the music, uh, sound design, and everything. So we had to have the film done before they could move on to the, the sound design, obviously. We work with a very small team. So we had one animator, that was me, and they have another animator, was part-time, and we had uh, a couple of interns that helped with the film. It was a lot of hard work, I have to say. A lot of long days to get the film done. The animation is very, very basic in this one. It just shows that Pepe is looking at the cookies and then she looks at her mom, who's about to leave. So first I drew the mother like always. So here you can see the mom is sharp. And then I fuse the layers to create a blurry effect. Here you have the line art, the pupils are animated. So it's very easy because the body isn't moving. I kept the line art the same and I only animated the eyes for this one. Beautiful, as you can see. <laughs> I turned off the, the eye layer. So usually what I do is, well, well uh, with, with all the shots, you have a rough version like the sketch you can see over here that shows us where the characters are. And then we clean it up. This one is pretty close, not, not exactly, but pretty close to the, the final shot. And the easy part about this film is that the line art is on one layer instead of having multiple layers like you saw with the, uh, the, the first film in which the characters are constructed out of different layers because they're all done without line art. And this one it was easier in that sense because you only had to have one layer instead of a whole lot of layers. Uh, but the downside was with line art is that you have to work very clean. If it's not drawn very clean, you can see mistakes. And <laughs> with the graduation film, with that style, it was very forgiving. Uh, in a sense, if you did not draw a perfect line, it was fine because it was drawn with a brush. And it has this jittery effect, which has this little hand-drawn look to it. Whereas with this film, everything had to be uh, very uh, straight lines and everything had to be drawn very clean, which is why... Um, both had their own advantages and disadvantages, in my opinion. Yeah, for this film, we worked with cleaners and colorists, uh, people that color the animation, and it was easier for them with line art. Whereas with the other style, we worked with a brush, so you would color right away. You would skip a face, the line art face, and you wouldn't have to, you, you don't need colorists or cleaners for that one. Uh, to direct the film, so when I graduated, I also had some people helping out. I had one intern <laughs> and one other person that also helped with the animation. Um, it, I, it, I think it was good to have that experience. And with this film, I tried to be a little bit more prepared. So I prepared the, uh, the reference files, everything, the backgrounds, everything was um, ready to go uh, for the production. And I think it was good to have the experience to understand what you need to have when you work in a team. And even from this film, I would also approach some things differently. Like be uh, sometimes they, they need even the, the smallest references like the back of the mother or uh, what the bread looks like. And, and those kind of things um, are also a, a thing you have to prepare for the animators. And because it's a small theme we worked with, it was easier because you can uh, just guide them through it. And if they have questions, they can come to you. Uh, with a bigger team, I would imagine it's a little bit more difficult, and you have, but obviously you would have more people helping out to make sure everything in the pipeline goes goes right. Um, 
but because I, I the team was like seven six people in total overall they, they didn't work all at the same time um, it was matchable in that in that sense but here you can see the movement in the background as well so the characters are walking and I cheated usually normal people would do this in After Effects I did this in TV paint so the background is frame animation as you can see I just moved the uh, I made a really big background and I just moved it and that's how I got the movement look but yeah the uh, idea for Pepe Loop so I made the graduation film and then I made the short film which is both based on the same characters and the same universe even if they look different <laughs> it's the same and currently I'm working on developing an animated series with the same characters and uh, as, as I mentioned I wrote multiple stories for these characters and I would love to tell them and I think an animated series is a great way to present those and explore more of the world as well as the characters I'm open, um, whether it's for TV or online, I'm open to both. But I, I do have to say my main focus right now is TV. If we could find someone who's interested for a online service, it would be interesting as well, since we are moving from TV to online a, a lot, like people are, are watching both. If you're interested in making your own films, I think you should go for it. And of course, this is a very easy thing to say, but I do see a lot of great animators and also great storytellers that haven't made any new films over the years uh, which is i think is very unfortunate but i do understand that they're very busy with their work you know their personal lives but it's it's very unfortunate and i do sometimes wonder what what um if they had the opportunity to make a new film if they would i'm working on the concept development of an animated series but at the same time i don't want to stop making short films altogether in my free time i if I have some sort of free time, I'm working on an own production as well, which is a completely different film. I'm trying to find ways for myself as well, how to keep making short films. They don't all have to be uh, in this universe or this concept. I like to have different kind of concept. I would love to make a, a horror a short film, for example, uh, which is something completely different from, from what I'm doing here. I, I understand it's difficult, but if you could somehow plan it in, if you have some free time, like try to work on it. Um, if you have difficulties finding motivation to work on it, which I can imagine is also a very a thing you can struggle with after you graduate, is maybe you can find the people who want to work with you, or maybe you can work in a studio where other people are as well, and they're working, and then you can join them, and you can also work on your short film. I think you can find ways to do it, and if you're interested in it, you can look at like how how do how can you find this in your own country, or how can you pitch your project? You can go to pitching events. Um, believe in your project. I think it's also very important why you want to tell the story, why you would want this to be an animated film.